<laughs> Alright, we're rolling. What's the good news? We, we got it. We got it? We got a permit. Yes. Ah, high five. Yeah. <laughs> so, one of the reasons we sailed all winter to make it all the way up to Tromsø was because we've been planning to continue to sail even further north to Svalbard, which if you don't know where Svalbard is, is an island about just as close as you can sail to the North Pole. But you can't just untie your lines, hop on a boat and sail to Svalbard. You have to apply for some permits. Uh, so a few weeks ago we filled out our application and we just got an email back from the governor's office with our permission to sail to Svalbard. So that's so exciting. exciting. <laughs> uh, the craziest part is, as far as we know, we are the first electric sailboat to ever make this trip, which also comes with a set of complications, mainly charging our batteries because it is that far north. Over the years, we've learned how much power we need for our boat and for our batteries. In a tropic, solar alone was plenty, but sailing in the north, we've learned that we can't just rely on sailing on <laughs> sailing alone <laughs> we can't just rely on solar alone and we've been trying to develop a wind turbine project but that is definitely still a work in progress and our region works well but we haven't tested it offshore enough to know for sure how much power we can reliably 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 Reliably, generate. reliably. That's a, it's, yeah. it. Just sounds weird. Reliably generate. <laughs> reliably. Anyway, as you know, sailing this far north over the past year, we've been heavily relying on marinas to charge up our batteries. But this summer, we're planning on sailing to remote places where marinas just don't exist. So before we can officially untie the lines and leave this dock, we're going to buy a mobile marina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't drop it in the ocean. Well, I guess we just sort of like bought a mobile marina. Smaller than hauling a dock around with us. Before we leave the dock, uh, we should probably make sure this thing actually works the way it's supposed to. Um, so I need to commission it, put oil in it, put gas in it, and, uh, and then I guess I need to make a charging cable for it because it's got. European sockets, so I'm gonna to need to make some sort of cable to plug this into our boat. I guess I could technically use our shore cord, but that seems overkill. It's 100 feet long. Um, yeah, so let's put some oil in here. Yeah, spark plug. <laughs> what, is, what is all this stuff? That's where the oil goes. The only reason this even makes sense for us is because we already have the gas outboard, so we already carry gasoline, petrol on board. Um, so yeah, it just kind of makes sense to be able to turn that into electricity as well. Normally, one of these 25 liter jugs will last us like two months, three months sometimes. We don't use our outboard that often. Um, so the gas is kind of just sitting there anyway. I think that's it. Gas is in, oil's in. Uh, I guess it's time to kick the tires and light the fires. I'm assuming that. Are you supposed to like turn something on? There's no fuel shut off. <laughs> but because it's the first time starting it, it's starting dry. Better not be this hard to start every time. Yeah. It's oh. definitely not the... I feel shut off. I knew there was, <laughs> I knew there was, I knew there was something I wasn't doing right. 
Now, let's make a couple of pulls. anticlimactic. It's so quiet. It's not under load yet. I can get used to this sound. It's not... It's, I mean, yeah, it's, it's actually quite... Is this how loud it's gonna be? No. It's this gonna be quieter? Louder? Oh, yeah. More like that. I can shut it onto like eco mode, so it's just that stuff. That's, that's on like, like idle. Purring. That's like on idle. Okay. So this. But if we're charging our, if we're charging the boat up, it's going to be more like that. Probably even louder, actually. Okay. But it's not something that we would, I mean, do. Often. No. This really is like a backup to the backup backup because we've got pretty good regen now, but it's still sort of like untested. We haven't gone offshore like long enough to really know how much we can consistently make and we are working on a wind turbine project but that's not quite as ready or as proven as we were hoping it was going to be either so we figured since we're carrying gas for the outboard anyway and we're sailing to places no one's taken an electric boat before it's probably gonna be a good idea to bring a marina with us because we're not gonna have docks like this in most of the places we're going this summer yeah. it's not that loud actually i wonder if like I wonder if in like a month we're gonna be like, why did we not have a generator for the last five years? <laughs> no. It's not that bad. I'm interested to find out how much fuel it consumes because there's lots of information online about, you know, it runs for 10 hours. These little Honda generators are everywhere. We've borrowed them before to work with power tools and stuff in the Rio, but uh, I'm interested to see like at full output how much fuel it's gonna consume and see what that compares to with uh, like if our boat's still had a diesel in it or something. Yeah. It'll be interesting to experiment. Yeah. I think it'll be interesting to have this now because we've shown with our six years of videos that we can do it with electric, but we had so many questions about what about with a generator? How would it work differently? So now we're gonna be able to answer those questions because we'll be able to actually experiment with it. Because we know the electric is possible. So how do you turn this thing off? Is there a button? Is there a... Uh, just just turn the fuel switch off. Don't turn it off yet though, because I want to let it run for like 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. No, I think the main reason is for the last six years, we've had the luxury of time, which means we can be becalmed, it doesn't matter. We can wait for good weather, it doesn't matter. We're not um, we're not beholden to like a nine to five job where like we, we can only go out on the weekends or we can only go sailing for one week a year or just vacation. So we've been able to take our time and use the wind accordingly. And the thing that's changed between the last six years and the next couple of months is we no longer have the luxury of time because we can't stay in Svalbard for the winter. So we need to get there, we need to have fun, we need to go out and explore. There's one marina with one and where we can plug in and the rest of it's all remote. And if the weather's not good that we can't sail back to the marina to charge up, we need a way to do that because we're not gonna have that luxury of time while we're sailing with the sort of clock ticking called winter. And it's starting to rain, so we're gonna go inside. I think we're gonna leave this running for 10 or 15 minutes just to make sure everything goes smoothly before we leave. Um, it's vibrating? Yeah. Is it going to like vibrate off? <laughs> like, should we no. tie it or something? I don't think so. I don't know, it just, it's, it's just weird that thing. it's just, it's vibrating. Uh, will we be able to run this like inside a locker or something like that? No. No, outside. outside, in a cockpit, open I was just air. curious, you know, like if we can make insulation something to no. make it like completely quiet. No. no, that'd be nice though. But I don't think we're gonna use it that much. Where are we gonna store it? <laughs> like, in here. I think so. I think we have space. It's not that big. What about in the last No, because like the wood paint is in the way. Yeah, probably in here. Alright, well. So we're just gonna let this. We're gonna let it run for a few minutes and then we're gonna put it in there and probably like the life raft never pull it out again. <laughs> that would be the goal, is if we never have to use that. Yeah. But that also might be the difference between spending a winter in Svalbard and not spending winter in Svalbard. So. We're not spending the winter in Svalbard. No. Oh, well, yeah, that's why we have that. Got yeah, it. so that we can like leave.
There are quite a few interesting pieces of architecture here at Tromso. There is the Polaria, which at first I thought was a library because it looks like a bunch of books stacking together, but turns out that's an aquarium. And then there is the library, which I thought looked like a giant piece of Pringles. <laughs> but the I think the most popular thing is the Arctic Cathedral, which I think it looks pretty cool. So we're gonna go inside and see what it looks like on the inside. Pretty cool building but honestly I feel like it's cooler from the outside <laughs> the outside's like really interesting and really big and grand and then you go inside it's actually a lot smaller and you kind of lose out on like the cool light in the windows and all that but um, yeah it feels yeah, like they cool. missed some opportunities to integrate the design into a church right <laughs> Maybe a little bit. but we might be overly critical I mean churches aren't like really our thing but at the same time churches tend to be where cultures put the most amount of time and effort and energy and design so they're usually like the most grand part of a city so they're always interesting to go and visit and and look at and enjoy cool. but the sunshine looks really nice as well good morning guys today we are going up that mountain. So Norway in general is just this giant outdoor playground. At just about every corner there's always a place to hike, a place to rock climb, a place to ski, bike, run, you name it. And it's always been amazing to see just how active all the Norwegians are here because there's so many outdoor things you can do. And uh, it's another beautiful sunny day today. So we're taking that advantage, we're outside, and we're getting ready to leave Tromsø soon. But before we do that, we have one more thing we haven't done yet, which is going up top of that mountain. But uh, you can technically hike it, but we're not hiking it today. Instead, we are taking this, whoa, this is bright. <laughs> Instead, we are taking this thing, which is a cable car. That's kind of sketchy. What do you can think? Like, can like lean over. So pretty. This view is magnificent never taken a cable car before no. so this How is was fun it? it was really cool to be able to see you know it, it goes faster than I expected were you scared no were you nervous no were you excited yes did you enjoy it of course cool. and we're gonna do it again going down I've read somewhere that this um, up to the cable car and to the top of the mountain is one of the most if not the most visited touristic spot of Tromsø and I can see why you can see the entire city from here 
This city, by the way, is the largest city of Northern Norway. And it's kind of hard to imagine that people lived around here since the end of the Ice Age. If you think about it right now, we are further north than the northern tip of Alaska. <laughs> and early tomorrow, we are going to set sail out of this fjord and further north. Well guys, it is 11 o'clock at night <laughs> and we are just about ready to officially leave Tromsø. Uh, the cool thing about sailing in July here is that it doesn't really matter what time of day it is. You can go sailing, you can go hiking, you can go rock climbing in the middle of the night because whether it's 1 o'clock in the morning or 1 o'clock in the afternoon, they both look exactly the same. So, everything is ready and we are about to leave the dock and officially start our sail towards Svalbard. Yeah, I'm so excited. Bye, Trumza. That's pretty cool. We are quite literally about to sail into the midnight sun. Where we've been here in the harbor in Trumza, the, the sun is up at midnight, but we're still kind of shaded by the hill. But like just out here, we're gonna turn left and start heading north underneath the bridge and we're gonna be in the sun and it's midnight. So it's kind of technically the first time that we will have actually laid eyes on the midnight sun. So that's pretty cool. 